it, it wasn't like I'm, I'm, I'm sitting comfortable at my house and then I decide, okay, I will leave my restaurants, I will leave my life and go and be a refugee in somewhere else. I took like a very risky journey to be somewhere safe. It was it was very dramatic actually. It was very like for once I me and my friend stuck in in in, in back of Lori between uh, in, inside Turkey actually. And it was very very cloudy. I couldn't even breathe. At that time, my only concern was my family's safety. And if I'm going to see them again or not. The look on, on, on my family's uh, faces, I was wondering if they could believe me that I'm, I'm not leaving them behind. You know, like, I know that they, they, they were worried about me, but also there is a small part of me thinking like, do they believe me that I really, really love them? I'm not just escaping and leaving them behind. This was one of the hardest part ever. Losing my mother was, had the same impact on me like when I lost my Damascus. So I came here in 2015. And since then, my dream was to build a successful restaurant. But I couldn't do it straight away because I didn't have the, like, enough funding to do so. So instead, I chose to start my first pop-up restaurant in Columbia Road in East London. We were sold out from the very beginning and then we start our um, a catering company and we did so until we secured this nice space uh, in Carnaby Street. So we have few refugees in, in the kitchen and on the floor. A small United Nation in our kitchen and in our restaurant. You will not be you will not be <coughs> treated differently. Being a refugee is not an option. We are just a human being like all of you. So stop dealing with us as numbers. Stop asking the stupid question, how does it look like to, to be a refugee? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. If only people could remember something about me, that this is, was a kind person and he dealt with us with kindness. I, I would love it. <laughs>